That's domestic as So what's up guys? Today we're going to take the SS and we're going to add a little performance improvement. We got LS Fest um, in a week from now. So we're going to take the car out um, to LS Fest and we're going to do some autocross um, and enjoy LS Fest that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the following Monday, um, we're going to go ahead and go to Drag Week up at Commerce in Atlanta Dragway. So hopefully, um, maybe we'll do two videos, maybe we'll do a couple um, but follow along. We're going to start with the install of the springs on the car. It is a Magna Ride car. It is a 2016. Um, so I think I have to deep in the rear connectors. That'll be interesting. I'm going to shoot this video kind of like a an instructional video since a lot of people haven't done that. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet about how to do it, but not really video stuff. Uh, real quick how to's. Um, so what do we have? We have the, the Eibach Pro Kit. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. First things first, we'll disconnect the battery. Um, I'm probably gonna do one side at a time just so I can walk through it. Uh, but hopefully this goes well, and hopefully um, the headaches that others have had around deep pinning the rear connectors and everything like that, I can walk you guys through verbally, uh, as well as show you instead of taking pictures and writing stuff online. Some people, um, it's easier for them to see that. So let's get started. All right. So, we're going to start with the left front. Um, first things first, get the car up, obviously. Take the tire off, um, tire and wheel. And we're going to disconnect this connector, which looks like it just pulls up, and then pop it off. Basically, you want to take all the connectors off of anything that's mounted to the shock tower or the shock itself. Um, so, that connector on that side, which looks like the Magna Ride, um, and then this is all brake. Probably this is ABS, and this is the brake line. Um, so disconnect where you can disconnect and pull off where you pull off and get everything out of the way um, And then we'll go about loosening everything else that's connected to the shock itself like the control arm here All right, so we got all the connectors taken off um, This one just slides up uh, this gray piece slides up and that disconnects your Magna ride system um, over here you have to spin the brake line um, to get it to actually come out. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually a square. Um, so you got to kind of spin it to pull it out of that little connector there. Get some light on it, that connector there. Um, I think, as I was saying, the ABS line, you just pop it out here and set it aside. Um, the back of the tabs on both the Magna Ride as well as this ABS line. Yeah, so... The best way to do this connector is to squeeze the pins and pull it out. Um, try not to break it. Uh, obviously, you don't want to break pieces as you're in here, especially on a newer car. Um, so now we got everything disconnected um, from the shock itself, all the electrical and ABS and brake lines. Um, so we're going to start with taking the sway bar end link off um, and take these loose. Quick little pro tip on your sway bar end link. Um, it has this... Uh, nut style tip on it. You'll want to put something on it. You can use a wrench or a socket um, But this is seven millimeter. This is 14 um, You can't just simply loosen this bolt as the whole uh, assembly spins um, So a little pro tip there So here's another tip sway bar and link as you can see where it sits is a lot higher than where the shock is when you're in full droop um, So I got my jack and I jacked it up um, to be able to get that sway bar and link out I usually like taking the sway bar and link out before I drop uh, the spindle. Um, that way we can not have any crazy binding or anything. Um, so I got the spindle bolts loose. Um, so let's go ahead and drop the spindle out of the way. So the spindle's up out of the way. Um, best way is to beat the bolts out as they lay in there. Um, I use a dead blow so it's softer. Don't use a hard pin hammer. Um, you have a chance of messing up the threads on there. Um, so now we're going to, we got the shock loose. There's nothing attached. I'm going to disconnect that top um, bolt and hope that this thing drops out. And then hopefully we can compress the spring and swap over to the new uh, Pro Kit one. So there we have it. Relatively simple. Um, it was that one bolt up top uh, and it drops down. Um, so now we got the shock off and now we get to go swap over the spring. Um, so, 
I'm going to use a spring compressor tool, compress this spring, take off the hat, um, and then swap over the spring and put it back in. Um, I'll go through that. And so pretty straightforward. It's, it's not rocket science. Um, really just three bolts and a couple connectors and you're good to go. Um, so hopefully you, if you have questions, put them in the comment section. I'll let you know if you get stuck. Um, but I heard the rear more difficult. I put on the BMR lower control arms in the rear. Um, so they were kind of challenging. A lot of hammering to get them back in place and get the bolt started. Um, so we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. But let's get this spring off and let's get the new one on. So we got the shock out. So the next step is to compress the spring and take the hat off. Um, when I say hat, this is the hat. This is the hat bolt. Um, so we took that first bolt off, dropped the spring out. Um, then we got our spring compressors on here. I think it's like a $60 rental at AutoZone. If you've never used one, uh, today's your lucky day. Um, you basically want to find the highest point and the lowest point that you can get the spring compressor on. And you want to kind of have the same number of coils on each uh, compressor. Um, so you see here we have one, two, three coils. We have one, two, three coils here. The lowest point, obviously right there. The highest point right here. Um, you want them to try to be even. As you can see, these are close to even. Well, I just spun that one, but they're close to even, but they're not exactly. That's okay. They don't have to be perfect. Um, you just don't want to collapse the stock spring kind of at an off-kilter position or else you won't be able to get the hat off or you'll make a dangerous situation. Now, there's a lot of compression under this. So if you took this hat off without compressing the spring, um, basically the hat after it reached the top would just shoot across the room. Um, and there are some pretty tragic uh, stories about what can happen if you do that. Um, so make sure you use a spring compressor. But basically now we're going to tighten these um, one at a time. So maybe like 5, 10 turns here, 5, 10 turns here. And you just go back and forth um, until you see the spring unseat on the hat, which is right here at the top, the pigtail. And then we will take the hat off, swap the spring. We're going to compress that spring to get it in here. Um, and then reinstalls the same as uninstall so um, let's get the spring off and then so we got the there. spring compressed until it was loose in the assembly um, we pulled the hat off here uh, so you just want to make sure that the parts you keep right side up and in order as you pull the hat off um, these are the nut bolt and hat um, I went to go pull the shock off here but I thought I'd just show you guys there's a zip tie I don't know if it's dark around the bottom of this dust shield um, so I'm just gonna cut that um, try not to cut the boot, but all right, so I just cut that but Sometimes things don't go the way I went to go pull on the top hat um, And pulled it off which means the top zip tie needs to go back around this bottom uh, Ledge if you see it there. Um, so I'll just make sure I get that back on I'm gonna zip tie that back up um, Leave that zip tie on I guess it wasn't tight there when it was tighter down here just because of the rubber um, So now we got the spring off we will go compress the other spring and slide that on and reassemble. I'm just so I do want to share something with you guys. This is about the third time I've taken this apart. There's a little bearing cap in the top of the shock. This sits in here. Um, and there's little ball bearings that roll around in there. So if that comes apart like it has on me twice, the bearings fall out. Um, and you got to go put them back in. So I've taken this apart twice now um, because the bearings falling out or when I assemble it, I push down on it and they fall out. So um, just a word of advice, be very, very careful with this. Make sure you don't lose any of these bearings. Make sure you put them back. Um, try to get them clean after you get them put back in. Um, but I'm going to keep putting this shock together and hopefully we get it together and then the car together and then work on the All back. right, so we got the wheel off the back here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start taking things loose. First things first, there's a connector that connects to the top of the shock. That's your magnetic ride control. Um, you want to get that disconnected. Uh, then next, I'm going to go ahead and set uh, this loose, which is the bottom of the shock. I'm not going to pull the bolt out. Um, but then there's four bolts at the top of the shock as well. I'm going to take those loose and get that all undone. Um, then it's a matter of dropping the rear, um, my light will work here, then it's a matter of dropping the rear control arm. Um, looks like 
all you have to take loose is the sway bar end link here and then the bolt that's on the bottom if you can see that that bolts to the um, rotor assembly there and then it should drop free um, same thing as the front you want to put a jack under it make sure you don't release too much pressure um, but yeah so we're gonna take that bolt that bolt those two um, the four up there and the sway bar end link and that should be it back here and it should come free so that was it um, it was the bolts that I called out So as I was saying um, there's the shock bolt at the bottom there um, there's the other bolt for the control arm and take those two out take the sway bar end link off um, it's a double it's a nut and a bolt so you got to hold the bottom um, and unscrew the top there uh, make sure you get that connector once again off the shock um, push this control arm down I got a jack under the uh, the assembly here so it doesn't drop any further than it is um, and get it out of the way so if you push down on that control arm uh, can take the shock off now let's get to uh, depending this connector so we can pull that through and then we can compress the shock and do the same thing that we did um, on the front shock so so step one um, we're gonna go through how to take the uh, depin the connector as they call it or take the connector loose um, I don't have a depinning tool, so I might actually end up cutting it like other people have and putting splicing it back together. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, but first things first, you have this connector here, which is just like the fronts. Um, basically, it's a pin behind, uh, so I want to carefully pull this out without breaking it. Um, and so that's step one. Let's get this disconnected. Well, on this one, you can't really reach behind and unpin it like you did on the fronts. Um, but there's this little tab that you can push down and pull this off. I think I might have broken the tab on this side. Um, but this slid off. I think I got it off correctly. I'm not sure. Um, but the next step is to pull the wire through. And you want to take this little kind of castle or whatever this guy is off. So like I said, I hate the little meticulous stuff. So I finally got that off. Um, I use this tiny, tiny screwdriver. Um... There's one clip here at the back. I don't know if you can see that. Um, one clip there at the back. One clip on top, just opposite of that. And then one big one up top. Um, so you kind of want to do them in that order. The back bottom one, top one, and then the big top one. Um, and then now we got this loose. Next thing we do is, uh, let me see if I can get a shot of this for you. Uh, in there, you see there's a purple tab that we want to take out within the connector there. Um, that will... That basically allows us to pull the pins out and then we can pull the wires through the connector here um, you do want to mark I'm probably going to use a sharpie or something um, the orientation of the wires so you don't want to pull this apart and not know which one goes on which side um, so mark somehow um, with a sharpie or with a pen or whatever it is on which side which wire goes to so I've been working on this connector trying to get it deep and load come on so I've been working on this connector trying to get the deep pin um, I went and actually bought a deep pinning tool but it's not long enough it's the only one that advanced had so I am taking my high road and uh, not wasting any more time I'm just gonna cut them and uh, splice them back together uh, so though, if you can find a deep pinning tool and you have the patience go for it I don't have the patience um, nor the tool, I guess, probably if I had the right tool, it'd be easy, but I'm going to cut it. I'm going to, um, put them back together and then we'll pull this spring off. Same thing as the other one. Take the hat off, take everything apart, put the new spring on and we'll be good to go. So, Hey guys, how's it going? You might notice third shirt means it's the third day I'm working on the car. Um, well, last Sunday I was working on the car, got the rear shock apart and the rear spring that was sent to me was incorrect. Um, LS Fest is now um, leaving tomorrow, um, and thankfully, the guys over at Ibach hooked me up. They got me one-day shipping. Uh, Joey Cortez, or no, Dave Cortez over at Ibach, thank you. Your customer support is incredible. Um, they understood the situation. Um, the wrong rear springs were shipped, so they got me some overnighted, and we're going to get the car together today. 
Uh, Joey over at SS Only and G8 Only, um, the probably best supply store for your SS or your G8. Thank you, Joey, for making sure that I was taken care of. Um, but let's get back to it. We have the shock still apart, um, and now we just have to reinstall the springs um, and then put it back in the car. So we're almost there. I'm going to compress this spring, put it back on the shock, wire everything back up, and jam it back in the car. Um, and we'll head out to LS Fest tomorrow. All right, so we got the spring compressed. Um, as you can see with the spring compressors, we had to get it down pretty far here. Kind of, to me, makes me a little nervous. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a workbench, so I've been scratching up the spring a little bit, um, as well as the shock down here. But I hope um, if you are doing this at home that you have a workbench to do this on instead of the floor. Um, we have uh, too many cars and bikes in the garage to do that and get put a workbench in here. Um, so I just tightened uh, the top nut, the hat nut, a little bit. Make sure that when you take all this apart, the dust shield, um, all the little components here, that you take them out in order and you put them back on in order. Um, and for tightening this down, I was using this crescent wrench, but it was slipping off and starting to strip that top bolt. Um, I don't have the right size. It's like a 9. Um, so in between an 8 and a 10, I don't have a 9 millimeter wrench. Uh, so I'm going to use the channel locks or vice grips or vice wrench, whatever uh, this is called. Can't think right now. Um, but I got it on there really tight. I'm going to tighten that top nut. Um, and install is the same as removal. So remember we have that bottom shock mount that goes into that control arm. Pull that control arm back up. The four bolts at the top. And then we reconnect the uh, uh, sway bar and reconnect all the lines and everything's good to go. So um, that's pretty much it. Comment below if you have questions. I'll come back when everything's uh, put together. So we got the crimp back on. Um, it doesn't look stock stock. Um, and it looks like I uh, did a number on that clip. Um, but an issue, if you use these crimps, they start here and here. They're pretty long and they're stiff. You don't want to put undue pressure on them so the wires don't pull out. Um, so basically, if I try to... Another thing, make sure this corrugated uh, wire cover or loom is meshing against. You don't want free wire to be touching... Um, the hole where this wire runs through, that's what this is for, so don't lose this when you take it apart. Um, but for me to mount this, see how it's going to bind the wire like that? So I'm actually not going to put it back on there. I'm going to feed it. It's not a lot of wire, and it's pretty tight on there. Um, what you don't want to have happen is after you reattach it um, to get it caught in the shock as it's compressing or something weird. Um, so I'm going to find the best position to put it in. So... The unghetto rig, other than just letting it hang there and taping it to the side, um, I banged out the connector uh, that we tried to take out earlier. Um, basically, just got a hammer and wedged it out. Um, and I ran a zip tie around where that connector was and through the hole where the wire comes through. Um, so basically, it's like half an inch forward than where it was stock. So this will hold it in place. Um, it's a lot better than just letting it hang or tying it anywhere. I would suggest if you're going to do this where you cut the wire, zip tie it back on here. Um, that's probably so the there we have it, guys. Out. It's 12.47 p.m. Um, Got to wake up at 6 o'clock and go to work. Going to drive five hours to Bowling Green from Georgia um, for LS Fest tomorrow. Um, it's exciting. That's the fun part. Thanks again to Dave Cortez over at Ibach. Thanks, Ibach customer support, the leadership and management over there. You guys are great. Got the car together. Um, it's on the ground now, right here. And uh, thanks again to Joey over at SS Only and G8 Only um, for the purchase of the springs and uh, being a good customer care individual, reaching out, making sure I was set to go. So here's the car. Um, it's sitting really nice. I'm about to get in it and make sure that there's no uh, check suspension lights, make sure everything, um, all the splicing and everything worked um, in terms of the magnetic ride. But it definitely, um, even without the suspension settling, it'll probably settle down um, even lower than this. Um, but it's definitely noticeably lower. I mean, I've owned the car for a little over a year now. So to me, it's noticeably, noticeably lower. 
Um, but let's jump in. Uh, fingers crossed here. Um, it is late, but I don't really care. So we'll start the car and hope that uh, there's no lights. Let's see what we got here. Oh, new. Just plugged in the battery. Didn't seem to like that. Cold, cold start. It's calibrating everything. It says the compass is calibrating there. Service suspension system. That's the light I was not hoping for, which means either one of the components for the MagnaRide sensors is messed up, um, or one of the harnesses, either front or back, was plugged in improperly. All right, uh, so like I said, I'd figure it out, and I figured it out in like five seconds. Um, I'll show you guys. So, underneath the car, yeah, this is just this side. I haven't even checked the other side yet. I got excited. Um, uh, let me see if I can get some light. As you can see there, let me get the light in there. It all has my phone here. The exhaust is still hot. Um, but as you can see, that little circle thing with the pin in it that's disconnected right there, that disconnection is what's causing it. That's the ride height sensor for the magnetic ride. Um, so. Thanks for watching guys if you lower the car figure out what you got to do here <laughs> but hopefully you guys enjoyed the install video all right bye guys subscribe below